and timber reclaimed from an old factory. We have some fence posts, some offcuts of construction plywood, and also in the wood store, I have two quarter sheets of oak veneered MDF. I've got two pieces what are long enough for the hippo posts, but for the cross pieces, I just haven't got any long enough. I found a piece of PSC which was 2.4 meters long, so I've cut that in half, and now I've got an old piece here which was out of the factory. And then I've got a two by three here. So what I'm going to do with these is laminate them together. Looks a bit bodgy, but I'll laminate them together. When I'm running through the thicknesser and the planer later on, they'll come out just fine. They've got to go through the thicknesser and planer. So I'm going to spend a bit of time bodging some material together, basically, for the foot and the head. Clamping them, gluing them together. Pretty nice already. Because this is PSA, them ones will take a bit more than used to. Now, but as long as they're all the same dimensions, you're not going to be able to run around the planer. I ended up gluing quite a lot more than I thought I would need in order to make the rails and the posts. This sheet of plywood here is going to be the rails. So I've, I've cut it down with a track saw and it's going to get cut again in half there. So they're about 200 mil each. But this plywood is ugly and 18 mil plywood really ain't strong enough for the rails. So what we're going to do is we're going to clad it with some pine. We've got lots of pieces of leftover pine in there, all different shapes, size, widths, lengths. We're going to rip them all down to the same width, run them through the thicknesser, and then we're going to clad it. It'll look pretty cool because it'll be like a brick wall effect all the way down like that. And then we'll trim the top where the plywood end is on show, splinter again. That's twice I've got a splinter in this video. Must be you guys, bad luck. I didn't run through the thickness of either. They've all come out. That blade, that CMT blade, by the way, not sponsored out, is just absolutely brilliant. So I'm just gonna. They're all the same size. We've got a decent finish on them already. I'll just sand them with 120, it'll be fine after that. I've sanded and I've filled and sanded again to 80 grit. Now I'm just going to put some pencil lines all the way across and I'm going to sand it to 120. Once these pencil lines are gone, I know that I've done a nice even sand and then that'll be this ready to cut down. Lovely. Right. Round over on both sides using my new trend pan router and it's so quiet this I can almost use it without e-defenders on because it's brushless Both of the rails are complete now, looking pretty good as well, may I add. I'm really happy how they've turned out. Now we're moving on to the head and the foot of the bed. 
I was going to use either a combination of half lap joints or through tenons or something along them sort of lines anyway for the join rig. The timber what I've got for the top and bottom of the headboard is just not long enough so we're going to have to use the domino and we're going to use four floating tenons in each joint. You could use dowels for this, you could use pocket holes or if you've got enough timber you could do mortise and tenons or through tenons or what, whatever type of joinery you want. But because of these are going to be a butt joint, the floating tenons will be perfect for this. They'll be super strong and it'll do the job just what we need. As you can see, the timber's turned out really nice once planed up. And we've got a spacer here on the right and a spacer here on the left. And that's just the distance from the bottom rail to the floor for the legs. Now I'm going to use the Festool Domino to do the joinery. Never daydream while using a power tool. Worst case scenario, cut your hand off. Best case scenario, your balls up and you drill mortises where they shouldn't be. So now I've got to think of a solution. Luckily, that's going to be at the back of the bed. So what I'll probably do is just attach everything like normal and then towards the end of the build, I'll fill these with some, I'll probably what I'll do is I'll probably chisel that bit out and then put a little sliver of pine in there. It's the back of the bed against the wall so you won't see it, but. You know, this I didn't draw through my hand. For the headboard I'm going to be adding some 18mm MDF inside the framework so all I need to do is put some oak beading on the inside and it will just sit onto that. I'm going to break 10mm in from the back and just attach it with glue and brad nails. Can you hear that noise in the background? That's just Jake roller in the bar, which will be the next video. Ooh. Let's see if I cut this to size first time then, shall we? Oh, tight fit. Okay, too tight, I reckon. You have diagnosed yourself. <laughs> He's no good diagnosing you. Hey, where are you? Is that not Oh, I forgot this is uh, 18 millimetre. I need bigger brads. I need bigger brads. I just put 15 mil brads in there. 18 mil stock, so it's basically. I said to Mum, where are you? Just like giving me a whole life story. To attach the rails to the head and the foot, 
I have these simple but excellent bits of hardware, bed lock they're called, and you get one of these inserts to put in the posts and four screws to put into the rail and then the bolts also go into the posts into these inserts and they're super solid. What I like to do is put them a couple of millimetres back just from the edge that way you, don't, you're, you ensure there's no gap if the metal is just touching the post before the rail itself and then what happens is as you tighten the bolts up it pulls your rails really snug against the actual posts. Super strong, no, no wobbling and whatsoever. When you put your bed together, it's rock solid. Not like some of them rubbish ones, what, you know, like, uh, what do they do? They're like clipping together, don't they? I can't explain them. They hook onto each other. They what, hook onto each other? Yeah. Yeah, so not like those ones that hook onto each other, they're terrible, these are spot on. So I'll put a link in the description for these. I always use these exact ones. So I've set my combination square just to the height of one of them. I'll just set it back a couple of mil. I'm using a trend drill here which is brushless, it's really quiet, smooth, excellent and I've got the trend snappy bits and these are the self-centering bits and they work really well. The 18 volt drill as well, super smooth, really nice. To attach the bed slats on, I've cut a 3x2 piece of timber in half and I've I'm attaching that with screws. I've not put any glue on because I've already waxed this rail and if you glue onto wax it doesn't stick anyway. Just putting plenty of screws in. That's not coming off, even with this fat ass in it. For the inserts, all I need to do is measure up the set distance that I want, and I'm going to measure up 300mm because I want to put some trays under the bed. Uh, so that's why I want to measure up that distance. I'm just using a square at the bottom to keep it flush. A mark or a pencil. Square that off. Then I get one of the brackets, put it in place, mark the holes. I'm using an 8mm drill bit. Inserts in with an Allen key. I'm applying a nice simple finish. It's Fiddy's Rugger Brown and it's a wax which is tinted. I keep my brushes in some white spirits in a food caddy which keeps them moist. I then Wipe the excess off, give it a good stir in the tin. Apply generously and then wipe off, doing a small section at a time. After I've completed the full headboard, I'll leave it to dry for 15-20 minutes. Then I'll come back and buff it off to a satin sheen. So, what's, what's you done now? There's nothing new, it's old stuff. It's because uh, people are trying to cancel it. Um, oh, so he's in trouble over all that. Yeah, well, there's loads of people are supporting him actually. Saying like, Here's the bed, up in Lily's room, looking pretty good may I add. Bed slats wise, very simple, we've just used every piece of pine that we had left, bits of old shelves and what have you, 
Uh, they're all about 22 mil thick, so very strong, and we've just bradded them into position. We won't need anything else. Say hi, Lil. There's the pregnant one. There's the furniture what I've already made. Uh, most of you guys have seen it, hiding behind all that stuff. She can now sort of room out there because we're going to get some plastic trays underneath here. I'm going to put the uh, mattress on now and then I'll give you some beauty shots. Got the nice new mattress on. Silent night. Look at the oak, looks lovely. You won't think it was made out of bits and bobs. And it's absolutely solid as a rock, look at that. Just don't budge an inch, does it though? Let me video the top bit. Solid. Looks lovely. The grain does run down on that one. And on that panel there it runs across. But that's only that's just because of the timber we had. But solid as a rock. Plenty of room underneath for the trays that are gonna go under there. And that's about it guys, hope you like it, and I'll see you on the next one, say bye Lil. Bye. <laughs>